Well, it's been about two and a half weeks, and I just got informed that, unfortunately, my Broken Bow Cabin loan has been declined. What's up, guys? It's Casey McEwen back again with another video this week. If you didn't watch my video a few weeks ago or about two weeks ago, I uploaded one that consisted of me selling my duplex, which is about to close next week. Using those funds, which to recap that video, I'm making over $300,000 on that property since purchasing it in 2017. I'm gonna use those funds to then 1031 into a Broken Bow cabin. Broken Bow in Oklahoma is a place where a lot of people are traveling to, whether it be for bachelor or bachelorette weekends, whether it be multi-generational families for a vacation, multiple families in large cabins staying together. And it's just a great place to be able to go. It's a short drive just from the DFW area as well as other surrounding large metroplexes. And it gives people the opportunity to really just, you know, enjoy time together. And it's a very hot place to invest. Now, to be honest with you guys, before I had even been to Broken Bow, I had my eyes set on a cabin. The main reason is I wanted to be able to get an Airbnb that I could go to for a long weekend, something that I was gonna be able to actually use myself. I even looked into you know condos that were up in Colorado at ski resorts. Now the downside to that was it was anywhere from eight to 12 hours. I did that about a year and a half ago with the dogs, but it's not something I would you know enjoy doing all the time. Now three hours to Broken Bow is much more serviceable. I can take my dogs to and have a really, really nice cabin to take a long weekend out there for. Now after my duplex was under contract, I wound up going up there. I really Really, really do love the area and the opportunity that is up there. I even drove an entire mountainside that had maybe one cabin that was even completed or close to completed. The whole other side of the mountain has not even technically been touched. Found a lot, got the lot under contract, and moved forward with hoping to get pre-approved. Now, I did get connected with a lender from someone I know locally. He is actually under contract and doing very much the same thing that I was looking to do. Uh, got approved, closed on the loan, no issue, and he's actually breaking ground here shortly and I was basically going to follow suit what he was going to do. But I got informed two and a half weeks after I already had the loan processed that they unfortunately didn't deny me for my qualifications, but they denied me because of the fact that they're a small bank and they're only doing 10 Broken Bow cabin loans. So to give you guys some context here, what I'm looking to do is use a construction loan. And to give you some backside on that as well, I'm currently using a construction loan for my other commercial property that has basically four units. I'm looking to remodel the two units that I'm going to occupy or KMAC Realty Group's gonna occupy. And the two other units are currently still occupied by tenants pay me. Now the construction side of that is you basically apply for a loan to close on the property, assuming that something's going to be improved with the property. In my case, it was $150,000 remodel of the two units that I'm gonna occupy. And you basically take draws and give it to the contractor over time to afford the cost to remodel. So something that you can't do on the residential side is I'm really rolling in the remodeling cost into the loan. That way when we close, I don't have to worry about refinancing it. It's already set and done. Now the same thing when it comes to building a cabin and acquiring a lot at the same time, it's a construction loan again, where I'm rolling in the lot cost and the build cost together, and the builder itself is going to take draws over time for the cost of building the cabin. So now to go back to my situation where after two and a half weeks, I got denied. It was a local bank that was only doing 10 of these build out commercial loans, and unfortunately they denied me. Now I did, go to another bank, which said the loan amount was too high. I was looking to purchase something in the $1.1 million range, too high. The next lender that I went to said, unfortunately, the loan amount that you're requesting, which is about three quarters of a million dollars, is too high. He's only gonna be able to lend six to 650. I needed 750 or 800. So I didn't even try to apply with that particular mortgage broker. Then another one said that the lot cost, the lot cost up in Broken Bow, is unfortunately going up substantially, but because of the lot cost alone, they were not even willing to consider my application. So I really went through six, seven different lenders before I wound up finding one that yes, finally approved me for my cabin. Now to give you guys some updates on what this looks like moving forward, this is going to be a very long drawn out process. I'm gonna have a great compilation video at the end of probably 2022, showing the entire process from start to finish. I did a lot of this in 2020 when I built my own custom home with an Airbnb suite in it, and I've been enjoying that since October of 2020. But the same thing is gonna be going with this cabin. I'll keep you guys updated from start to finish, but all is moving forward. So now really the next thing that's going to happen is we're gonna get an appraisal 
appraisal on it. Again, I'm looking to lend about a million seventy-five thousand, or a little under one point one. My hope and expectation is the appraisal comes back probably at one point three or one point four. And even though it may come back at one point three or one point four, eventually when it's built at the end of this year or maybe beginning of two thousand and twenty-three, the appraised value is going to be what it is right now not what it's gonna be next year. So I almost guarantee myself it's gonna have another hundred or $200,000 in appreciation just in the next 12 months. So unfortunately, because Broken Bow is over three hours away, it's not something I'm gonna be able to give you guys updates on necessarily daily or weekly or maybe even monthly, but I am going to be posting videos here periodically, just giving you guys updates along the way. Now I will also be doing a numbers video when all is said and done, when this is closed, and when I have a better idea of what this will likely rent for. But I can tell you, just based on what is out there right now, I'm looking at anywhere between $500 to $800 a night. Also, this $500 to $800 is very much going to be a standard nightly rate or maybe a weekend rate. I can't even imagine what it's gonna be at the peak of the summer schedule in Broken Bow where everyone is up there vacationing. Now, again, this $500 to $800 is just a ballpark number that I'm using based off of other Airbnbs that are currently renting right now. And I'm also looking at that $500 to $800 as the current state of what it would rent for in March and summertime is much more busy. So in the summertime, I can see it, especially when it gets super booked, that I'm gonna get even north of 800. But again, guys, I'm gonna give you all of those numbers in a separate video, probably in a month or two. We are expected to close now instead of in March, we're pushing it back to the middle of April, which just pushes the completion time back by about a month. But I can tell you firsthand that the commercial property that I have acquired back in January here locally in Dallas is going to be much more expensive than this Broken Bow cabin loan. And the reason being is because property taxes in Texas are substantially higher than they are in Oklahoma. Also when it comes to my commercial property in the Dallas region, I have an HOA. The Broken Bow Cabin will not have an HOA. And the HOA cost for the four units alone is almost $1,000 a month when it comes to my commercial property here locally. Now, before I end this video, guys, I want to give you a couple tips when it comes to commercial lending. First things first, make sure you have a great CPA and that CPA is familiar with lending. And the reason why I say that is because a majority of these Broken Bow Cabin lenders or small banks or mortgage brokers, they needed three years instead of two years of prior tax returns. And because I haven't officially filed my 2021 taxes yet, I'm just about to do that. But because I haven't done that, they had to pull all the way back to 2018 taxes. And I can tell you, 2018, I was still a high school teacher for the first five months of the year. And then I went and transitioned full time into real estate. So I can tell you the taxes that year showed far less profitability than my 2020 and 2021 taxes. But really what I'm saying with taxes is make sure you have a good CPA that's not going to write off everything because as a business owner, if you write off everything, you're not gonna show any income. If you don't show any income, I can tell you, hands down, you're not gonna qualify for a single thing. The sole reason why I'm able to purchase this commercial property for myself and my company in Dallas, and then 45 days later, be able to buy another million dollar commercial property is because of my taxes and the fact that I unfortunately paid the IRS a lot of money to show that yes, my business is truly profitable. Now, the good side about commercial lending is if you do have a good CPA, if you don't write off everything, if you're truly profitable and you have a good credit score, they aren't gonna ask for the last 27 million months of bank statements. They aren't going to get nitty gritty about, hey, what's this large deposit here? What's this large deposit here? That's gonna be more or less the residential side, you know, traditional Freddie or Fannie Mae loans when you're buying a house. So yes, the financing can be a little bit more lenient, but also on the flip side, if you don't have proper tax taxes paid and proper taxes filed, uh, it's gonna be pretty difficult for you to be able to qualify for any commercial property. Also, another thing when it comes to commercial loans, this one's kind of cool in a sense where I'm only gonna be paying interest only for the first 12 months or really until the build job is complete. I'm doing the same thing when it comes to remodeling my commercial unit in Dallas specifically. I typically would have a $10,000 mortgage on my Dallas commercial property, but because I'm only paying interest this month alone, my mortgage payment was only about 2,400. So about 25% of my mortgage I'm only having to pay versus the entire mortgage when I can't even technically move in there and enjoy the aspect of my commercial property. Same thing when it comes to this broken bow cabin, I'm only gonna be paying interest only payments for the first 12 to 13 months when it's being built. It's a lot more expensive if you include the entire mortgage rather than just the interest only. Now, 
The downside with this is I don't have any money coming in from this property. The commercial property in Dallas, I technically have two tenants paying me rent while I'm remodeling the other two units. In this case, the Broken Bow Cabin, I'm basically going to be paying out of pocket this entire year for interest only payments until next year when I start renting it out. And my hope is to have it completed probably in January of next year, slap down a huge credit card payment for it to be furnished as a full write-off for 2023, and then just start accumulating all of the income for the year of 2023. So that's about it, guys. I did initially get told no probably about four or five, six different times. But, you know, I spent the next whole week trying to apply for just about any bank or opportunity that I could to get a lender to approve me up in Broken Bow and finally found one. Again, none of this was because of my file, whether it be my debt to income ratio, my credit score, the income that I make, so on and so forth. It was solely the fact that a lot of the lenders up there are small banks. They're not huge national lenders that have an infinite amount to lend. So I had to find one that was still willing to lend and fortunately enough I did. So with this video being concluded guys I hope to take you on this journey of building a almost 3,000 square foot luxury cabin in Broken Bow, Oklahoma that's going to have four bedrooms, four and a half bath. It's going to have a pool spot in the back with a jacuzzi as well, a huge back deck, a top deck for a view as well and so much more. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure to do so so you can follow this journey over the course of 2022, as well as all the other projects I've got going on. I'm gonna be putting out a video just next week of a remodel that I went, this is not something new, but unfortunately I went far over the budget that I intended. I'm gonna be putting out again that video next week, as well as updates on my commercial property. That should be finishing up in the next two months. And hopefully here in two or three months, I'm finally only dealing with one project and that's gonna be this beautiful cabin. Thanks again for watching guys. Make sure to like and subscribe. It really does help and stay tuned for the next video.